truth stranger than fiction. That's crazy. You're out of it. Why would your brother do that? Why would the NSA be stalking you? You're just a teacher and you're telling me the NSA is stalking you? Yeah, right. These are some of the many things I have heard when I matter-of-factly say that my brother, whom I no longer consider my brother, Matt, is an NSA agent that has actively been stalking me since before he even left to train in Atlanta, Georgia, in 1990. I know that he stalks me, and I know he is an NSA agent. I remember my brother telling me he was going to become an NSA agent and stalk me. I did not record it. Nobody was there as a witness, and he did not have the statement notarized for legal purposes. But he did tell me on Thanksgiving Day, some year around 1998, that he was going to become an NSA agent just to stalk me. The cold, serious tone of his voice made a pet in my stomach, but I didn't take him serious. Little did I recognize, he already graduated and was actively stalking me. I remember three of Matt's close friends, Troy Pittman, Rob Ricky, and Mark Ricky, that, as early as 1988, had some type of secret about me that they weren't telling me, something that gave me a gut feeling that they were up to something. The subtle signs read from their facial expressions, attitudes, and secret meetings created an awareness in me, and I always knew something was amiss, I just never knew what it was. He told me he was going to become an NSA agent in 1998, and I did not believe him. My stomach dropped into a pit, but I let it pass and looked him in his eyes and said, Good luck with that one, while I was thinking, Yay, right. All four of my original stalkers covered the spectrum of the executive branch of government. Each one left one right after the other within a small span of time. Matt Pope went NSA and left around 1990. Two others went police and military. The last always was and always will be a convict. Take each one, and the executive branch has one main stalker in each system of that particular branch of government. A cop on the good side, a convict on the bad side, a military person, and an NSA agent to pull the strings from behind the scenes. I know that my brother, Matt Pope, is an NSA agent that stalks me. I overheard Matt and Rob discussing selling cannabis for half price, $100 an ounce instead of the usual $200 an ounce that Rob and I were supposed to be getting as partners in the 6,000 watt light business that Rob helped me out with while living rent free for 3 to 4 years at my house in Kerman, California. I heard Rob clearly when he said to my brother, you should start smoking weed, Matt, I'll give it to you for half price. Then laughing about it, a few days later, I saw Rob cutting branches of buds at harvest time and then moving his arm to tuck it into his pants behind him, then bringing that arm back empty-handed to cut more branches. I saw this with my eyes clearly, but then I moved a step back and made a noise so he would know I was there. Then I stepped through the plastic curtain that separated the vegetative and budding sections of the grow, acting like I saw nothing. And Rob played it off, acting like he was just pre-trimming leaf to make the harvest trim a little easier when we cut them down. I noted the size of the plants carefully. When we cut them down a week or so later, they were much smaller. Both Rob and Matt were involved with trying to bankrupt me, which is one of the many angles they play to increase stress in a targeted victim's life. And then there was the 30-day notice that I gave Rob. I saw the way Matt increased the frequency of his visits to my house to almost every day compared to once a week. This was sometime around April of 2013. According to my mother and her husband, my brother was coming up to help me get Rob out of the house. Matt lived with them at the time, and they told me that Matt was helping me get rid of that fat slob Rob. But I was at my house when Matt and Rob were planning together. One time Matt showed up and when I opened the door, he walked right past me without looking at me or saying a word. And I watched him go straight into the garage where Rob was at. He'd be hanging with Rob for 8 hours and then come sit and talk with me for 20 minutes, acting like he hated Rob and was on my side before returning home to our mother to manipulate her perceptions as well. My mom hasn't discussed this issue with me for even 5 minutes, she refuses to even talk about it. I used to think highly of her intelligence, but she's just a cowardly hater, just like the rest of them. Sometimes I would walk into the garage and Rob would be taking screws out of the drywall and I would say, politely at first, Rob, I just gave you a 30-day notice and I don't feel comfortable with you working on taking screws out of my wall. By the third time I saw him doing it, it turned into, Rob, I've told you already that I don't want you taking screws out of my house. As I closed the distance to physically take his active tool from removing this one particular drywall screw from my house, Matt Pope quickly and forcibly interjected his hand, arm and body in between us and pressed me away while squaring me into the eyes, smiling and saying, David, listen to how crazy that sounds. He's just taking out one little drywall screw and he's putting up a shelf. People are going to think that's crazy. Three hours or so after Matt left that night, I knew enough was enough and they have never been welcome at my house since, and they never will again. I mourned the loss of my brother that night. Matt Pope is no brother of mine. He broke out one of my car windows, poked a hole in my AC unit on my car, broke several boards in my attic, and hacked my computer while posing as a brother that was helping me out. He is a real piece of shit. In November of 2013, I bought a Galaxy S3 and I sat in the car and opened it up.
turning it on. The first picture that popped up was a picture of this guy named Matt Pope, and there was a sound recording in my folders besides the picture that was in my gallery. The recording was of Matt and our mother, but I didn't hear the conversation. I just could tell it was Matt and Nancy in the background, and I only listened to it for a few seconds. Who in the world buys a phone and turns it on and sees the very first image pop up and it is their brother, and to find that someone else has already accessed root control of the device? Me, the only one that has a brother that became an NSA agent just to stalk me, that's who. I know Matt Pope is an agent of national security that targets me for gang stalking. Around 2009, he spent several hours to help my computer improve performance out of the goodness of his heart, only to find out a year or two later by following YouTube videos about hacking that my computer was permanently being hacked by two sources that my amateur skills could not get past. One source was in Mountain View from a corporate-owned, single IP address computer, and another was from a multiple IP computer 50 miles west of Washington, D.C. from Amazon.com. I forget the name of the city, but I remember looking it up on a map. I could not trace any further which computer was linked to mine and running from system software on my computer with the same system files that my computer had, just having a different number identifying it, and if I ended the task it would pop right back up onto my computer. And all these tasks attaching to my computer were initiated from a computer on the west coast and a computer on the east coast. This was occurring while my computer was put into a state running only programs from my system. I know for sure that Matt set my computer up so he could better stalk my every move and even place stuff online under my identity in my network and then spread rumors. I bought a new computer around November 19th at Walmart, a gateway computer that specifically had no wireless capability for internet. I never had the internet cabled into this computer. Two weeks after buying it, after being gone several hours, I found that 23 users had special administrative rights and I had no administrative control. Special public access keys were entered somehow and a special credentialed certificate was issued to the top user, and 22 users had administrative certification, and I had guest user access. Within hours, it shut down and never turned on again. I got the new power supply and it still didn't turn on. I had an old student that learned from Mr. M, a top-notch computer engineer from the Navy, and the old student was stumped. The original power supply had a melted part when I took the computer apart. My guess is something on the motherboard was purposefully burned up by altering the way the power supply provided its power to the board. All I know is, it had no wireless and it never was connected online. I would guess that they came in while I was gone and put in a virus manually, and or installed wireless access on the motherboard. The truth is, I am uncertain how or what they did. All I know is they entered public access keys that granted them special administrative rights. And their stalking continues. Last week, around March 5th, 2014, I could not find my cigarettes. They were on my table earlier, but I couldn't find them. So I went to Fast Trip at 1M and pulled next to the only car there. While I paid the cashier, I remember this guy entering the store while he looked at me sharply, like his eyes were aiming at me in frustration, as he dashed into the store. I left to find that there were now six cars outside, three for gas and two next to mine, and my original lost pack of cigarettes were laying right in the middle of my seat, where they had not been before. There are a vast array of other reasons how I know the NSA gang stalks me. I know they come into my house while I am at home and while I am not at home. So if shit disappears, I have to entertain the possibility that national security is making me think that someone stole a missing item just to make me accuse a person that comes over to my house. America needs to be destroyed and replaced by a more honest system.